In February 1968, Architectural Record published the 12-story high Ford Foundation headquarters, which had opened a few months before on East 42nd Street near the United Nations. The article commended architects Kevin Roche, John Dinkelow Associates for the granite, steel, and Corten Building's monumentality and its sense of ritual, hierarchy, and immense power. The 1968 coverage also pointed to the feeling of community fostered by the interior glass-enclosed atrium where landscape architect Dan Kiley had created a richly planted terraced garden extending from 42nd Street up a slope and grade to the building's actual entrance on 43rd Street. Today, the attributes of ritual and hierarchy found in the design are being questioned by the Foundation, which is undertaking a $190 million renovation. Architectural Records' February 2016 issue addresses these changes through interviews with both the architect Kevin Roche and the president of the Ford Foundation, Darren Walker. My view on this building is that it is brilliant. I feel every day a privilege being able to walk through the doors of this building and believe that it's the place where I work. As you may have read in the New York Times, I recently said that this amazing building is not really compatible with the culture of the Ford Foundation today. Today, we are a more integrated, more distributed, participatory culture. Therefore, we don't need a private dining room for the executive staff and a cafeteria for the administrative and support staff. We need one common eating space for all staff. We must be compliant with New York City Building Code by 2019. That will require us to install a very sophisticated uh, sprinkler system. Uh, we will have to uh, undertake some abatement of, of asbestos in, um, in, in the building. And um, that then has given us, given us the opportunity to think, uh, think anew. We will be tearing down the walls that separate us on floors because we don't need offices and walls any longer in this building. What we need is open space to be able to see each other and engage with each other. And so when we hired Gensler, we hired them with the understanding that we had to be both modern and contemporary and cutting edge but that we had to treasure and honor the legacy that we have inherited. The Gensler people understand that they too are responsible for this treasure and that they have a client 
in me and the trustees of the Ford Foundation with a very strong point of view. There are so many aspects of this building that we must retain in order to honor Kevin's vision, but also the integrity. In 1997, this was uh, designated a landmark and the exterior of the building and the interior garden of the building were landmarked. And what that means is uh, the design of Dan Kiley's uh, garden, because that design was so remarkable, uh, we are going to simply uh, refurbish it, um, it consistent with uh, the original pattern and design. The president's suite will be approximately half the size of the current suite. It will include a smaller, much smaller private office, but there will be a workspace uh, in an open area uh, for the president that will allow me to interact with my colleagues on an ongoing basis. When Dan Kelly designed that garden and this building was built, there was no uh, American with Disabilities Act uh, code. Uh, so right now, uh, the building is not uh, code compliant with ADA uh, requirements. Uh, we would have to have a discrete ramp um, that would make it possible uh, to uh, navigate uh, the, uh, the, uh, a corridor or uh, an area of the garden. When we interviewed a number of uh, landscape architect, landscape design firms, and settled on Raymond Junkles because uh, the energy that he brought, the intelligence that he brought, because this building is going to be gutted, the uh, plantings and materials in the garden can't survive. And so we're going to give them all away and they'll find happy lives um, in other public facilities. Fortunately, we have on a regular basis uh, the counsel and advice and wisdom of Kevin and two of his senior architects. It would be impossible to move this building forward in any way, to even think about redesigning this building without Kevin Roche at my side.